Hello everybody, welcome back to The Garage in Spain. My name's Gary. Today is Monday the 5th of April, the bank holiday, and the March update on the layout is well overdue. So I thought it's about time I put together a few uh, bits of video to show you what I've been up to in the last month or so. So without further ado, let's take the camera down and we'll pop around the layout and I can show you what I've been up to. Okay, so we're starting down at Arbalas Junction. And just as a reminder from last month's uh, work um, on the layout, this is what uh, I've achieved. Um, basically the uh, hillside for the cutting had been completed and I'd used some ordinary uh, acrylic paint just to give me some guidelines as to where I'd be doing the scenics. And then uh, I've set about over the last few weeks doing just that. So this is the new view of the cutting with uh, the hillside on the left finished, the road running down from the uh, bottom of the hillside right the way through to the coal yard. That's all been uh, covered with uh, flock and uh, static grass and homemade trees, uh, seafoam trees. And I'll leave a little link in the uh, picture above so that you can go straight to see how the uh, trees are manufactured. And at the end of the first part of the cutting is now the signal box position. I started off by just cutting out a section of the hillside, fitting a retaining wall, and then the old uh, kit signal box that I had, I've just uh, positioned with a couple of little extras, a little uh, lamp hut, and uh, various bits and pieces there and then on the other side of the main tracks and the branch line is now the uh, road through to the coal yard. Plenty of shrubbery on there and again static grass and uh, now I get some better running pictures as the uh, as the trains come through. Behind the actual hillside, there's going to be uh, some actual background scenery. I've yet to order that. I'm not quite sure who to go to on that. So any ideas from people that, that uh, they found uh, useful would be nice to be seen down in the comments. That would be helpful. But uh, I'm pretty pleased with the uh, overall layout and obviously the, uh, the views I get now when I'm filming such as this uh, certainly brings a, a, a bit more uh, authenticity to the scenes. Now, one thing that I uh, have been uh, playing with is the piece of scenery there behind the train where I'm going to have an industrial estate. I've decided that I actually want to build some fencing. So in the next part of the video, I show how I went about this. Um, I've basically taken some 0.9 millimeter steel wire, uh, the sort of stuff you'd find for gardening, that type of thing. And as you can see, it obviously doesn't uh, want to conform to uh, a straight line and so uh, using a little technique I learnt from a couple of other people online I've secured one end as you can see into the jaws of a vice bent over a little section at the end on the other to fit into the chuck of my uh, drill and uh, once that's uh, secured in uh, tension is applied not too much tension and about 10 to 15 seconds worth of uh, fast spinning will actually uh, tense the wire into uh, form a really straight length. Um, it's literally as simple as that. Um, obviously you've got to be careful that it doesn't whip out or break, but uh, once it's done, as you can see, uh, it uh, holds its uh, shape again. Uh, and it's uh, probably the best way I've found now for keeping the wire straight rather than sort of stretching or anything else. And as you can see, put along the straight edge there, it's, it's held a really good straight line. So to uh, operate the uh, system, it's simply a case of, first of all, cutting the lengths of the fence panel required. Um, I have put a little piece of uh, wire down there to show the length I need, and I make sure that I do about 20 millimeters extra, and that will become apparent in a few moments as to why I do that. 
So the first two pieces I cut were the length of the fence that I require, which in this case was 300 millimeters. And uh, on the next section, I am cutting the uh, uprights, and these are 30 millimeters, as you can see. I cut them slightly longer, only by a, a millimeter or so. And despite the burr left on the end, uh, that's quite okay, and you'll see in a moment how I get rid of those. Um, I then have added a little bit of extra detail in um, a diagonal support at each end of the fence and these I cut at 25 millimeters and again they have the burr but uh, that will be removed uh, in the next section. Okay so the items that I've now got are the two lengths which are required, the uh, upright sections and the two uh, support sections uh, along with some uh, uh, mosquito netting, some solder, some flux, uh, a small brush and a soldering iron. So the next thing to do is just to check the actual overall lengths of each of the pieces of the uprights and there's a slight discrepancy as you can see probably no more than a millimetre but again getting rid of the burrs in a moment will actually bring them down to within a half a millimetre or so of tolerance which is quite acceptable and you'll see how that is covered in, in a short while. Um, next I'm removing the burrs. I've uh, got my Dremel held in, uh, in the vise. Um, I've used the uh, spherical um, grinder so that I can actually move it very gently underneath just to take away the burr and it's very important to hold the wire as close as possible to the end otherwise the pressure of the ball will actually bend and put it out of shape and again very very little pressure is required on the ball and all it's looking to do is just take off the very sharp part of the burr the soldering will actually make any holes or gaps between the uprights and the parallel bars disappear and you'll see that as we go further along to actually put the fence together um, I use a piece of old MDF which is marked out to the size, uh, height and length of the fencing that I require and you can now see the reason for the extra 10 millimeters either end is so that uh, when I use blue tack to hold this down to the baseboard uh, obviously it's not going to block the position that I want to actually solder the end of the uh, cable to. So uh, I run these uh, two pieces of what cable at the top, which are just just on or perhaps under 30 millimeters gap between them. And you can see putting the first upright in will actually decide how far that is apart. So although you might want exactly, you know, an nth degree of 30 millimeters, uh, to be honest, the eye won't see this over the length of the fence. And if it's absolutely dreadful, you can always start again. But I found the easiest way is just to simply put the uh, first two in, set up the blue tack, and then use a scalpel just to move the uh, posts around. So here you can see I've uh, completed the uh, length with the uprights, and the final little bit of adjustment just to make sure those uh, uprights are in position. And again, I don't do any soldering until everything's in position. If you do happen to move it, using blue tack is the ideal situation. You can just move it around as you need to. The next important thing is to make sure that all of the joints receive some flux. I just use the flux paste because I find it doesn't run everywhere. Uh, but obviously everybody has their own preference. Uh, I should have said at the beginning, actually it's important to use um, wire that is uh, a steel based. Um, so once they're in position, the important thing is to use a hot soldering iron. Hold it, the uh, tip of the iron over the join first of all to get the area hot and then introduce the solder very, very slowly. As you can see, it instantly takes to where the flux was, fills the gap between and a, a final stroke, I don't know if you noticed there, from the top downwards down the upright will actually pull the solder down to that nice little sort of triangular shape. I found that's the best. Um, if you do it wrong, you know, don't worry, just use a hot solder iron, take the solder off and start again. And if you feel, you know, you want to have some practice first, obviously, you know, 
have a, have a good old practice because at the end of the day, that little stroke coming down just helps you clean up at the end once you want to remo remove the burrs and the sharp edges. But uh, it's important to get that little joint hot with the arm before you introduce the solder and then you'll find it will flow down quite nicely. So now I'm uh, just positioning the uh, support sections at each end of the fence and with a 25 millimeter length I find that 10 millimeters down from the top as you can see gives a nice angle. I've, I've checked it with the fence I've actually got in my back garden and sort of done a uh, pro rata distancing and it looks it looks good enough but again the the actual design of the fence is entirely up to you but here, here as I say I've got the 10 millimeters and again remember to flux the joint and uh, it's a, li a little bit more tricky you, you don't want to have too much uh, of a, a solder mark across the diagonal but uh, to be honest again it's it's going to be such a small amount of solder that uh, if you are really unhappy with it you can either file it away or just simply resolder but I, f I find if you just hold the iron still enough to drag down the last little piece there you can get quite a nice little join there and in real life on the on the actual fence I have in the garden here there is actually two sections of flat steel either side of the join so you know until you actually get close up uh, you wouldn't you wouldn't know it was there Once the uh, soldering is complete, uh, it's just a matter of removing the blue tack. And at this stage, when you lift up the pieces of blue tack, you will actually feel if the soldier ha solder rather hasn't uh, completely set through on the join. If that's the case, stop where you are, don't take any more blue tack off, and just reheat and reseal the join. Uh, but you should find that it will come up quite well, and obviously you'll have as I call it, a good side and a bad side. There you can see a little burr that's just hanging on. But again, using the, the Dremel in a moment, uh, freehand, you'll just be able to smooth those over and get rid of. Uh, this is the, as I call it, the, the better side. Uh, you can also see in the joints here if the, if the solder has taken properly. Um, and that's the side I should be putting the uh, material on, the uh, fly screening. Uh, but uh, in any case, uh, it's a good idea to remove the burrs so just on a flat surface uh, and being careful again with the Dremel, I use the gloves just in case it spits up any of the sharp uh, burrs that are coming off. Uh, just a little use of a, a Dremel ball again. It just tidies up as much as you need to. I find that if there's anything major in between the actual angles is to use a very fine needle file. But uh, overall, I found that the, uh, the Dremel ball was, was the best thing to use. And then finally, before the, uh, the netting is attached, I just cut off the uh, extended sections of uh, parallel bar there. And again, cutting as close as I can to the upright. And also panicking not that uh, if you do disturb the joint and it does crack, and again, it's just a case of simply heating up and applying a little bit more solder. Um, I have tried using the, the Dremel to sort of take the last piece of burr off on there but I find that's a little bit too um, uh, erratic and sometimes breaks the, uh, the joint. So I'd use a little needle file to do that. The next thing and is important thing to do is to attach four small balls of blue tack at the corners. That's so that when it's lying on the board there, there is just a fraction of a millimeters difference between the metal and the board. And that will become apparent when you start to glue. So as I say, there's four little blobs there and a longer piece, I'd put a few more extra little tiny blobs in there, but you want them as small as possible. Uh, the next thing to do is to lay the uh, uh, fly screen over the uh, uh, board and over the actual fencing. It's important to put the blue tack underneath on this part and you'll see why towards the end as to why I've done it this way and not put the blue tack first and then the cloth onto it. It's all down to the tension and the removing at the end, and you'll see that's how apparent that is at the end. But again, I just use sufficient blue tack to hold it 
tight but not stretching because you don't want to uh, disturb the actual uh, creation of the holes within the um, netting so they elongate and they don't look uh, symmetric anymore so again little blobs of blue blobs of blue tack underneath and then some more down the side just to hold it against the steel but not to pull it down onto the baseboard Now we're ready to start gluing. Uh, the five little blobs of blue tack there are just sitting on the netting, not actually fixed down to the base. They're just there to keep attention around the square of each of those uh, sections of the fencing. Um, I prefer to use a gel uh, super glue and apply it with a small stick, as you can see here. And I use that little drawing and dobbing effect. Um, try not to drag too thick a line across, especially from the nozzle of a blue uh, of a super glue uh, pot. It seems to come out far too fast. And to be honest, the material is so light and thin, you only need the very smallest amount to hold it to the steel. The actual glue I'm using it actually uh, is one for porous. And the reason I've used it for a porous material is for the netting. But I do find it holds just perfectly well with the, uh, the steel underneath. And obviously there's a, an activator um, the glue will start to dry after about 10 to 15 seconds uh, but only becomes absolutely rigid and hardened uh, once obviously the uh, uh, activator is applied which I do and then once I've done those first five I find it easy to do perhaps five or six squares at a time uh, I then repeat the process for the rest and then carefully remove the uh, blue tack and get ready to lift this from the actual board now Although the uh, uh, super glue has gone off and obviously it's hardening all the time that it's left now, um, you do have still a sensible amount of time to remove any sort of catching onto the board. And you'll see in a moment that uh, in fact, there's just two little sections. Now, the reason that I said originally about putting the blue tack underneath is so that you can do just that. You can pull back the edge without straining the tension across the rest of the fencing. And that's quite important. When I first did it, I was doing it the other way around, and a, a couple of times I pulled up the uh, the netting despite the fact it was super glued. Uh, I'm just releasing the uh, little balls in the corner, and then I run the blade of a knife along. The top was fine. I'd been pretty good with the super glue. And on the bottom, you'll see there's two little sections where it just catches. Um, there is quite a bit of uh, strength in it, so don't be too scared if you find something like this where it holds. I try wedging it first of all, and then just simply put my hand on top and just give it a little tweak and it just pops up and frees from the board. So once the uh, steel is free from the board I just removed the little four blobs of uh, super, uh, blue tack from the corners that usually doesn't cause any problems if it has been caught by the super glue I'd leave it a little bit longer and then use a knife later on just to remove that so once the uh, netting has attached itself properly to the uh, the steel uh, the next point is to uh, remove the netting on the edge now, the reason I've shown me reloading a sharp blade is for this very reason. I would say that one of the most important things is to have the sharpest, newest blade in your knife when you come to use the uh, uh, cutting to take away the netting. Although it is a nylon net, it uh, just requires an extremely sharp blade. Otherwise, you will tear it and you'll have to start again if you rip off. Um, one thing I found is if you push gently down on the steel, Keep the blade at a very low angle, right hard up against the steel and move in one direction only and don't stop until you've moved your fingers as I did there. 
keeping the tension downwards and keeping the blade as flat as possible and then to go past the end without stopping and just continue and you'll find that if it's a brilliantly sharp blade like that it will come away without any problems at all a little bit of practice will will get it there you do have a room for maneuver if when you've cut there's a little tiny bit of burring left or a little bit of the uh, wire has stuck uh, to the material just the smallest of pressure as you saw there and then looking along the length of there there was a fraction of uh, fencing there for about the fourth one along you can just see and if you watch the knife is so sharp that as you draw it along it will actually cut through and there was a couple of little splinters of the super glue coming away as well and, and giving a perfectly straight edge So once you've uh, done your final tidying up with the uh, loose pieces of the fly screen netting and you're happy with the result then obviously that goes on to the layout. I've yet to finalise the fixing method but I've got some ideas and I'll show those in my next video. But certainly uh, the effect I've now got is this piece which is about a metre long made in exactly the same way all as one go. There's some extra bracing in between. The buildings behind represent the industrial estate I will be building over the next few months. Uh, they're using existing pieces of my uh, layout that I've got. So that shows that's uh, fencing in its uh, finished state. And now we move on up to the uh, terminus of the branch line section on the elevated part of the layout. And I fixed in place there the point motors and the SIG and I've made up a small uh, box, a temporary box, just to control those point motors. Underneath the uh, baseboard uh, that I've used there, I've just put a simple uh, analog point motors in. It's just showing the wiring there, and also the one for the signal. So that on the uh, physical work I've done on the layout this month is uh, a complete video. And uh, hopefully, I will uh, be doing a lot more between now and the next update. So I will hand myself back to myself to say goodbye. Well, I hope everybody's enjoyed this month's update on the layout. If you have any questions that you'd like answering or any uh, comments you'd like to make, please leave those in the box down below the video and I'll certainly get back to everybody who posts. Also, if you'd like to uh, subscribe, I'll leave a little uh, icon up here for you to press. And whilst you're doing that, if you hit the little bell icon, that will then notify you of any future videos that I publish. In the meantime, I wish everybody well with their modelling. Stay safe, and I'll see you next time. Bye for now.